Hi, Tacoma. Welcome to your TV classroom, third graders. It's time to get learning. How are you today? Well, let's check in with our zones, shall we? So, how's your body feeling? How's your head feeling? How are your emotions feeling? Rafa, how are you doing today? You're in the green? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm kind of in the blue zone today. I've got a really bad headache. Have you ever had a bad headache? So that's really kind of bothering me today. But you know, I was talking with Ms. Oslin and Mr. Kevin, and they said, we can do hard things. I said, yep, we can. So I'm going to do the best I can today. You're going to do the best you can today. And we're going to get ready to learn. Before we begin, please make sure you have your whiteboard and marker, your learning buddy, and counters if you like them. Sometimes it's still helpful to use counters when you're learning something new, but we're going to be doing a lot of drawing today. All right. Let's take a look. Ah, what's missing Thursday? So friends, what's missing? How do we figure it out? Well, what do we know? Yeah, we know a part and a part. We know two parts. What do we do? Put them together. What's our answer? 499. See how easy that is? What's missing? What are you doing in your head? Tell me. Oh, Rafa, you said 375 plus 25 is 400. But then you got stuck there because you didn't know how many were left in your 900, in your 99. Okay, so that's not working. Did anyone do standard algorithm in their head? Did anyone do this? That's not supposed to be, that's just seven. Two, 17, what's 17 minus nine? Do you know? Anybody? It's eight. If you struggle with teen numbers minus eight and nine, something you can think about is how many do I need to take away to get to the 10? And then how many more do I need to take away and what's my answer that's left? So 17 minus nine, well, if I take away seven, that gets me 10. And I take away two more, that gets me to eight. That's the strategy I use. Then two minus zero is two. But this is why, why are you subtracting? Because my brain hurts, friends, that's why. We need to add. We need to add, not subtract. Oh dear, I told you I have a headache today, didn't I? I sure do. So, we you know what we didn't do. We didn't do what we did here where we said we have a part and a part. So what do we know? A part and a part. Do you see why it's important to pay attention to what you're doing? I see students do this all the time. They get going on a problem, they think they know what they need to do, they just and then they've made all these mistakes. So it's important as you're always working to go, did that make sense? That did not make sense. Okay? All right. So what is 30, 375 plus 99? Well, what's 375 plus 100? 475. But I'm not adding 100. I'm just adding 99. So it should be 470. Four. Very good. We could double check it by adding this way. What's five plus nine? Fourteen. What's ten plus seven? Seventeen. What's three plus one? Four. Four hundred seventy-four. How many of you are going, no, Mrs. Wally, don't subtract? But some of you were. All right, what do we know? A part and a part. Now, Rafa, I noticed that too. Rafa said, Mrs. Wally, the difference is the same here. 
as here. This is 79 and this is 99. What's the difference between 79 and 99? 20. So if our answer was 474 and I'm adding 20 less, what will my answer be? 454. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, next problem. Oh, this one's easy. We have a part and a part. What's my whole? Yeah, 379. Okay. So if it's 379 here, and this is changing by 50, we just need to put 50 more. So what's 379 plus 50? 379 plus 50. Well, what's 7 plus 5? 12. What's 70 plus 50? 120. So it would be 400. Yes, 429. 9, 20. Do you see? Very good. All right, today we're learning how multiplication and division are related. Who remembers? Pebble, do you remember? Yeah, when we multiply, we have two factors and it equals a product. We divide, we have a total divided by number of groups equals how many in each group, which is the quotient. Write a division equation to represent the groups of apples. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. What's the division equation you would use to represent how many apples are in each bag? I see some people counting up to figure out how many apples there are all together. Very good. All right, how many apples were there total? 15. And we divided it into how many bags? Three. And how many apples were in each bag? Five. Not so bad when you use words like that, is it? These symbols make our brains go a little wobbly. The thing is, once we know the meaning of the symbols, our brains understand the problem. Ed plants the same number of flowers in each pot at the right. Write two multiplication equations and two division equations that this picture shows. I'm gonna give you one minute. Go ahead and begin. All right, well, we see four groups of three, and that equals 12. If I didn't know four groups of three, but I knew three groups of four, I would also get 12. What are the division equations that are related to this? What number do we start with? The total amount, just like with addition, it's the parts, and then you get the whole, and with subtraction, you start with the whole amount. Same with division. 
So I have 12 flowers, dividing it into four groups, and I have how many flowers in each group? Three. 12 flowers divided into groups of three is how many flowers? How many pots? Sorry, four pots. All right. We're gonna be explaining something, so get ready. Yasmin sees 63 divided by question mark equals seven and thinks, hmm, there are 63 things in all that are divided into groups. There are seven in each group. Explain how Yasmin can use multiplication to help her find the exact number of groups. Go ahead and write the equation on your board. 63 divided by question mark equals seven. Okay. Do you know a multiplication fact that equals 63 with a seven? What is it? Yeah, seven times nine equals 63. So, how many groups are there? Yeah, there's nine because we have the seven and we have the 63. So the missing factor is nine. There are nine groups of seven. Do you see how you use the multiplication to help you? Great. Marissa has four boxes of markers with six markers in each box. She wrote the following equations. Four times six equals 24. Six times four equals 24. 24 divided by four equals six. And 24 divided by six equals four. So I want you to write each of those out on your whiteboard. I'll give you about 10 seconds. Go ahead and write each of them with some space on your whiteboard. Okay, circle the number in each equation that shows the total. Okay, so four times six is 24. What's my total? 24. What about the next problem? Six times four equals 24. What's my total? 24. 24 divided by, ooh. Excuse me, 24 divided by four equals six. What's my total? 24. And the next one? 24. Okay, so we've done that. So we've circled the number. That is the total number of markers. Now, put a box around the number in each equation that shows the number of groups. Four groups of six. Four groups of six. This one should be grouped, six groups of four. Four groups, six groups. Underline the number in each equation that shows the number in each group. Each group, each group, each group each group. Pretty great, huh? All right. Next problem. Look at the division equation 15 divided by 5. Wait a minute. We did this one earlier. At the very beginning with the apples in the bags. What was it? Who remembers? Yeah, 3 because 3 times 5 is 15. Write a multiplication equation you can use to solve this division problem. Use a question mark for the unknown. So, remember this is groups. Five groups of question mark equals 15. Now, draw a model on your whiteboard that could help you solve this. I'm gonna give you one minute and go and write the answer.
All right, are you ready? Five groups. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Three in each group. So five times three equals fifteen. Do you agree? Great job. Now, you don't have to write the story problem. Well, we're going to think of one. Write a story problem that can be modeled by the equation 35 divided by 7 equals blank. Okay. Rafa, it's story time. Mrs. Wally made 35 cinnamon rolls for the neighbors in her neighborhood. She has seven neighbors. How many cinnamon rolls will each neighbor get? Mrs. Wally, mm. can Kevin be one of the neighbors? Oh, yes. So can. Uh -huh. I make really yummy cinnamon rolls. So, 35 cinnamon rolls, seven neighbors. Hmm. What's the multiplication equation we would use? Seven groups of something equals 35. Do you know it? Seven groups of five equals 35. So we believe it's going to be five cinnamon rolls each. So let's do an array and see if that's right. Five. Ten. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven neighbors get five cinnamon rolls each. So 35 divided by seven equals five. And now I know what to bake and bring Ms. Oslin and Mr. Kevin on Friday before break. Cinnamon rolls. All right. Here's your assignment for today. You're going to do page 247 and 248. Guess what? There are problems we just did. So I want you to see if you can remember them and do them on your own. If at any point on this page you are not understanding, that's okay. But this is that time when if you're still not understanding, you need to call your teacher and let them know so they can help you maybe in a different way. Because you might need to hear it differently than the way that I told you. Today we explained problems, we modeled problems, and we used multiplication to help us solve the problems. Great job third graders. Thanks for hanging with me while I was a little bit off today. I appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Rules. 1. You have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. 2. A new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. 3. You will get 10 points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. 4. If you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. 5. See how many points you can get. Good luck!
Who the heck are you? What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. No, you're not.
heck are you? What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. No, you're not. Welcome back from your break. Welcome to Literacy, Reading and Writing with me, Mrs. Oslin. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you had a chance to gather your materials because we are going to do some more work on our biographies. So you're also going to want to make sure you have all of the graphic organizers and the writing papers that we've been doing the last couple weeks and your pencil and then of course your learning buddy. So if you didn't gather your materials, take a moment and do that right now. All right, looks like we are ready to go. I'm going to remind you of our three personal standards. The three personal standards are the decisions that we make and how we behave when we come together so everyone feels safe thinking and sharing and being brave trying new writing techniques. Our three personal standards are, say them with me, show respect, make good decisions, solve problems. Today, we're gonna to continue what we started on Tuesday, learning how biographers choose inspirational subjects about whom they have strong opinions and want to research further. And I'm going to add that we talked on Tuesday about how important it is that you choose a subject for your bi biography that you can actually find information about. So, because if there's no, not a lot of information out there, it's going to be really difficult for you to have a good, rich biography. So you'll remember we read Faith Ringgold's If a Bus Could Talk, the story of Rosa Parks. And Faith had strong opinions about Rosa Parks. She was inspired by Rosa Parks' work in the civil rights movement, and she wanted and was able to research her further. Some more examples that we have had of mentor texts are a picture book of Cesar Chavez by David and Michael Adler. So this, the subject of their biography was someone that they felt strongly about, someone that inspired them, that made them want to do things to make the world better for other people. Uh, and they were also wanted to research him further and there was information out there that they could use for their research. Another example, is Tanya or Tanya Lee Stone. I've heard Tanya, I've heard Tanya. I should have researched that, names are important. She wrote a book about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and the right to vote. She felt inspired by the work that Elizabeth Cady Stanton did for women's rights and the right to vote. She wanted to and was able to research her further. And our last example is Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Byrne. And we talked about how Jennifer Byrne also included more information for us as readers in this biography. If we were curious about learning more about Jacques Cousteau, she included information in the biography for us so that we could continue the research. Now, some of the documents that we've been working on to get our thinking onto paper and organize it so that we can start actually writing a biography. We talked about how some biographers choose a subject who has gone on exploration or had inventions or discoveries that have changed the way the world works. And get that document out in front of you now and remind yourself about who you were thinking about researching 
that changed the way the world works. That's right. We talked about, I was curious about the hybrid car engine, and Mr. Kevin taught us that it was Dr. Ferdinand Porsche who was the original inventor of a hybrid car engine back in 1898, and that was blowing my mind on Tuesday. The other documents that I want you to get out are My Passion, My Person, where we did some thinking about what are you interested in? Are you interested in sports and you could research an athlete? Are you interested in activities? Could you research singers, artists, dancers, actors, authors? Um, what are the clubs you belong to? Who created those clubs or who, be who else belongs to those clubs that you could research? Is there a cause that you feel passionately about? Animal rights activists, environmental protectors, politicians, or are there people that you try to model your life after? That goes back to that having strong opinions about people. And why do you admire these people so much? So go back and review how you answered these questions. Take some time. Right. The next document, we have done so much work the last couple weeks. This is what we did on Tuesday. It's called, why do I, or excuse me, who do I want to write about and why? And you went through these questions to get closer to a final selection of your subject for who you wanted to write about. And you went through your writing notebook, you went through all these documents and you put stars next to people's whose names that you felt strongly about, that you wanted to, and you felt you were able to continue researching. And your job was to select one or two final people to continue researching to begin drafting a biography about. Now, what we're gonna work on today, what you are gonna work on today is the document called Biography Research Homework. And that's page 13 in your ELA packet. Find that document now. And then make sure you get your name and today's date at the top. You ready? Okay. Looking at this document, we are not gonna complete this together today. You are going to spend some time over your winter break completing this document. You will need books or texts about your subject to do research on. So if you don't have books or texts, if you don't have access to the internet or a device, contact your local librarians and ask them to gather materials for you on your subject. And then you can go pick them up. They'll tell you how to do that safely. Go pick them up from the library and use them to complete this document to start your research homework. The things that you're going to want to be thinking about about your subject are, we talked a lot about accomplishments and how the subject of biography often have overcome obstacles and achieved accomplishments. What did they do? What have they contributed? What did they invent or create? What laws have they changed? On this document, the first thing you're gonna write is the date of the accomplishment, and the question is, what was the accomplish accomplishment? Include interesting details. You're, you want to write this in 
interesting way so that your reader wants to keep reading. Use the books and text to find the date of the, a major accomplishment and write about what was the accomplishment with important details. Next, you're going to write, what words would you use to describe your subject regarding this accomplishment and why? This is where your opinion is going to come through. Use the document in your ELA packet that has character traits or qualities to describe your subject. Also, the question there says, why? Why do you describe the person using that word? Add lots of interesting detail. You might also add a connection that you're making with this person. Are they inspiring to you? Why are they inspiring to you? Have they created something that you benefit from in your life, like a hybrid car engine? I benefit from that. Or have they changed laws that benefit you as a person, like Elizabeth Cady Stanton? started the movement for women's rights, being able to vote, I benefit from that because I can vote now. So think about what are those personal connections that you have with your subject and include them in this part of the document. Then we talked about how our subjects often have overcome struggles or obstacles. Thinking about Rosa Parks, what was the date of the struggle or obstacle? What was the date where she was arrested for sitting in the area of the bus where she was not allowed to? What was the struggle or obstacle? Include interesting details. Make it interesting and fun or fascinating. Maybe you write it in such a way that your reader goes, wow, I never knew that. I need to keep reading this biography. Next. What words would you use to describe your subject regarding this struggle or obstacle? You're doing this twice. The first time is talking about the accomplishment of the, your subject. How would you describe them in relation to their accomplishment? And this is how would you describe them in relation to their struggle or obstacle? What did they have to overcome or live through in order to get to the accomplishment? And there's the question why. Add interesting details, connections, personal connections that you have with your subject that make it interesting for your reader. That is your work for break. Get in touch with your local librarians if you need help getting texts. I needed help getting texts for our lesson that we're gonna do for tomorrow, a, a fun cooking segment. Make sure you're there. And so I emailed Miss Jamie at the library and she sent me books that we are going to use and I'll show them to you tomorrow. So they're extremely helpful. They want to help you. So reach out to them. As you're doing your independent reading today, make sure you're paying attention to, are you really understanding what you're reading? Could you tell someone what you read about? Or think about the individual words in your text. Are you noticing that there's a word that is preventing you from understanding a sentence? Use this document to help you when meaning breaks down. Also, when you're independently reading today, pay attention to when your mind starts to think about something else. This happened to me last night as I was reading. I started thinking about something that had nothing to do with my book. And so I had to go back and reread. And what the strategy that I used was I played it in my mind like a movie and that helped me better focus so that I could remember and understand what I was reading. So practice using these strategies to help you when you notice that you're not as focused. Also continue adding to your reading log, send this to your teachers so that they know what you've been working on, goals that you're setting. And well, this was yesterday. That was fun with the Tacoma Fire Department, wasn't it? On Wednesday, January, and this says 6th, but it's actually the 13th. Wednesday, January 13th, we are going to have 
Tawana Nobles in here at our TV classroom talking about her story. I'm so excited to meet her and learn all about what she does through her work, work with the Tacoma Urban League. Now, third graders, it is time for your affirmation. And pause, Mrs. Oslin, pause. I want to remind you that there is no school starting Monday through January 2nd. We will be back here on Monday, January 4th. You do have school tomorrow though. I just wanna give you a couple days to be thinking about it. Now, your affirmation, and Mr. Kevin helped me with this one, was I am kind, I am kind. Say it with me, I am kind. Show that to the people around you today and tomorrow how kind you can be. Thank you so much, third graders. We did some really important deep thinking about the subject of our, our biography today. And I can't wait to read your biographies. Thank you so much. We will see you back here tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.